Welcome to the Exam Study Expert Podcast, helping you ace your exams at school and university through the psychology of high performance and the science of studying smarter, not harder. It's my pleasure to introduce your host, the Cambridge-trained memory psychologist and exam success coach, William Wadsworth. Well, hello and welcome back to the Exam Study Expert podcast and our very last episode of 2020. The podcast is going to be going on hiatus for the next couple of weeks, but just before I leave you, I wanted to share a few thoughts about taking some well-earned time off after all your hard work this year, including why I think rest is so important and how to make sure that your downtime is 100% guilt-free so that when you do return to your work, you're fully refreshed and recharged and raring to go. If you'll permit me though, before I get to that, I'd just love to take a minute or two to look back on this wild year that we've all had, and in particular to say a huge thank you to you for all your support of the podcast through it all. The show was born back in 2019, but I think it's really come into its own in the midst of this crazy old year we've had in 2020. We've been lucky enough to have been joined by some awesome guests, uh, to name but a few. Uh, We had Chris Bailey on Productivity Hacks, uh, Claire Kelly on that lovely episode about mindfulness and training your concentration, and uh, Kendra Adachi on being a lazy genius about running your life as a student, uh, to name but a few. Um, But these all seem to go down a storm with you, uh, the ones I just mentioned now setting all-time listener records for us, uh, which was really exciting. Something else that comes to mind when I look back on 2020 as a whole is how the world has felt like a smaller place. We've all been going through the same challenges and facing many of the same hardships. And I think that's been true for the podcast as well. Uh, We've become a much more global community over the past 12 months. I'm based in the UK, as as you may know, but according to our statistics on Spotify alone, our American listenership has grown by 82% over the year, our Australian audience by 112%, and our listener growth in India seems to have been quite literally off the charts at over 999%, 999% growth year on year. So howdy, g'day, and svagat he. That's um, my little attempt at saying welcome in in Hindi. Um, Wherever you are, it's been such a pleasure to have your company on the show. Uh, Thank you for your support, whether it's been by sharing the show with friends, uh, leaving some of those nice reviews we've had, uh, getting in touch directly with me with your questions or to share a success story, or by simply subscribing, following uh, and tuning in each week. It's been such a pleasure to, to have your company. On a bit more of a personal note, uh, 2020 was also the year where one-on-one exam success coaching uh, for me went from being something I'd always done on the side and always really enjoyed to being absolutely front and centre of really everything I do. As the coronavirus pandemic bit uh, and I couldn't do so much of my usual work in schools, I started uh, substantially ramping up the online private coaching work I was doing with students all around the world. Being honest with you, I absolutely love doing it. And it's just the most rewarding thing to be able to to help a student turn around their prospect at school, university or in professional exams and to see them take their study game to a whole new level, starting to work smarter with more focus and less stress and at the end of it all be able to turn around with a set of exam results they're absolutely delighted with. Um, Of course, if you'd like to find out more about that kind of one-on-one help uh, to support your exam goals, you can always read more and uh, get in touch anytime you like at examstudyexpert.com forward slash coaching. All of that, of course, is great news for the podcast because it means I can continue to work hard on making the show for you each and every week. With that, I'm determined to make 2021 the best year yet, uh, with new episodes every week already planned through to at least April. I just want to whet your appetite briefly for what's to come. Uh, From about February onwards, we'll be launching a major science of learning season, uh, which features some of the world's top learning scientists and psychologists explaining how you can hack your memory to learn faster and remember more than ever before. 
Uh, but before we get to that in the new year, uh, we're kicking off the year with a bang with a little uh, sequence of episodes designed to boost your motivation and mindset and help you get into really great habits for the year ahead. We're kicking all of that off uh, with a very special interview with the legendary Brian Tracy in the first week of January. Uh, Brian is the grandfather of so much modern time management and motivation advice, including the world famous Eat the Frog principle that may already be familiar to, to quite a few of you. I can't wait to share our conversation and his expertise with you all in the new year. I, I sincerely look forward to uh, seeing you in the new year for all of that. But for now, with the Christmas and holiday season upon us, I wanted to finish off the year with a few thoughts on how to get the balance right between work and life. Because while, of course, we need to put the work in if we want to succeed, too much work can lead to unintended consequences like exhaustion and burnout. And that's just not what I want for any of us, especially after the ups and downs and uncertainties uh, that's been thrown at us all this year. My personal view on kind of how to take breaks and how to take breaks well is that the most productive study routines incorporate breaks and time off at four distinct levels. I call them level one, two, three and four breaks. Level one breaks means taking a few minutes off every hour. Level two breaks means taking a few hours off each day. Level three breaks means taking a day off or so each week. And finally, level four breaks means that every few weeks you take a few days off. Let me just give you a little bit of colour on what each of these four levels means. As I said, level one is to take a few minutes off for every hour, a few minutes every hour. This one is about keeping your short-term focus and concentration levels up. When I'm in libraries or study rooms, um, a common mistake I see is students essentially not moving from their desk for two, three or, or even more hours at a stretch. Unless you're doing a very mechanical kind of task that requires relatively limited brain power, there's no way your concentration levels can hold up consistently for three hours straight, even if you think they do. I'd suggest that at the very least, you want to top up your focus with a little mini break at the top of every hour. It doesn't have to be long, it might only be a five minute pause to make a cup of tea, refill your water bottle, or just stretch and walk about. You might need to break more frequently than that, uh, but I'd suggest at least doing it every hour or so. As a result, your brain's going to be working so much better, and the net outcome is that you actually get more work in, done in the day, not less. Level two takes things up a level, so that's about taking a few hours off each day. And I'm not really talking about time off to sleep here, though that's really important too. This is a separate thing. I think that even at your busiest patches, everyone needs a little downtime each day away from the study desk to eat well, exercise, unwind, and generally take that time to look after your mind and your body. Neglect those kind of things for too long and you're going to be on the road to burnout. Level three looks across the whole week, taking roughly a day off each and every week as a, as a kind of rough rule of thumb. And I don't necessarily mean that that whole day has to be taken all at once, all on the same day, because I know just as well as you do that that won't always be practical in a lot of cases. I know I, for one, can't remember too many weeks as a student where I'd have had the luxury of being able to take a whole day off all in one go. But what I'd absolutely do is have a half day off here, an afternoon off there, maybe an evening off another time, for a mix of things like extracurricular activities and socialising. I think this is kind of se separate and sits in addition to that daily ritual of building in some time for self-care each and every day we talked about just now in level two. For me, level three, as I say, is about building in that time for fun and relaxation. Those extracurricular activities, socialising, just the downtime you might need by yourself. I think all that across the whole week wants to add up to around a day off across the whole week. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Uh, if you want to take it all in on the same day, all in one go, go for it. If you want to split it up across the week as I did, then then do that. But I think this time off uh, is, is, is really important if you want to maintain your uh, study routine consistently for, for the long run. 
So that's level three, taking a day off each week. Um, finally, level four is taking the longest time horizon of all. This one's about every now and then, maybe it's every four weeks, every six weeks, every eight weeks, making sure you take a longer stretch of pure downtime. Now, that might mean planning a clear work-free weekend in the middle of a semester, perhaps to go away with friends, or simply to stay put and chill. That might mean blocking out some time for a guilt-free week off at the start of the summer vacation, before you start working on any holiday projects. Or here at this time of year, uh, in mid-December, it probably means choosing which days over the Christmas period you're going to leave your study books closed and enjoy a well-earned breather after what's been a pretty tough year for, for many of us. I think the key to a successful level four break is to make sure you plan it in advance. For one thing, knowing that you've got that time off coming up is a powerful motivator to keep working consistently in the run up to that holiday uh, so that you feel that when you've reached that holiday, uh, reach those days off, you've really earned them. Uh, and more than that, by having a firm plan agreed with yourself well in advance, these are the days I'm going to take off. When it comes time to take those days off, you can do so completely guilt-free, completely relaxing, without your conscience nagging away at you, worrying whether you can really afford to take the time off. You've made the plan, you've given yourself permission to completely enjoy this time off, so take the opportunity and relax. Savour the downtime, and then when it's time to return to your books, you will do so with renewed vigour. So, to recap... A few minutes off every hour to keep your focus up. A few hours off each day to take care of your mind and body. A day off or so each week to avoid getting exhausted week in, week out. And making sure you take a few days off every few weeks to fully unplug and recharge. So if you're planning to do just that and take a few days off here at the end of the year, I really hope you enjoy your break. Just remember to study smart and make the most of the days when it is time to work. Do stay safe through it all and I look forward to seeing you in the new year. Thanks again for listening and have a very Merry Christmas.